all my fellow farmer brothers and sisters. All right, let's get these pistons and get the head back on this 450. Stay tuned. Alright, so you might notice a change of scenery here on where this 450 is sitting. I actually got it in the other shop. I was a little tired of working on it out there and trying to push that big cart right there up the hill, constantly working on this thing. So I went ahead and I brought, made room in here and brought it down here. So I'm going to spin this camera around and talk about what we're going to do, do today and show you where the 300 is sitting. All right, so yes, the 450 is in here, so makes it a little nicer to work on. I don't have the dirt and uh, gravel floor to work on anymore. Kind of tired of dropping bolts and stuff and losing things out there, and I couldn't find the damn thing, so <laughs> that got old real quick. Plus, too, I got to jack this front end up anyway so I can straighten this out, so I need a solid floor to do that on. And for getting those back wheels off. I don't know if they're loaded or not yet. I don't think they are, but I still have to get them off so I can clean everything up and paint it. And again, a tractor this heavy, I am not doing it up air on a slight angle, on a dirt floor. Nope, nope, nope. Ain't happening. So anyway, so I went ahead and rearranged some things and I slid the 300 over to there. And I know it looks like it's a catch-all right now, but I just needed to move my welding cart and my engine crane over there next to it. Just to give me some room over here so I can actually walk around these things. But it's amazing the difference on the size of that 450 compared to the 300 i mean when you sit back and then look at them it's like wow <laughs> that 450 really is a lot bigger than that 300 anyway yeah it was fun trying to get it in here too that steering wheel was really close to that garage door coming in here i had to push up just a little bit to get it in so long story short uh it's not going to be going in and out of here with the exhaust pipe on here that's for sure anyway all right so what we're going to do today is we're going to get these pistons back in um get the head on and possibly get the oil pan on and get it buttoned up and then i'm going to repair this governor real fast weld this back together since it is the m and w the uh is it the g11 so obviously i want to utilize that um so we're going to go ahead and get that fixed uh start rebuilding the carburetor and then we're going to rebuild the distributor once i do that we're pretty much ready to fire this thing up um see how it sounds so really i i'm hoping i don't have much to do on this um i did get a new hydraulic line to replace this with i actually got a really nice hydraulic line um we're gonna put that on there nice steel line that way it doesn't have the cuts from the years when they get broke and people put the ends on there and crimp these in i'd like to find another one eventually for that uh 450 diesel but anyway um the brakes seem to work pretty good, but I'm still going to pull it apart, just check everything. If there's anything grody in there, we're going to clean it up, but it does work good. Unfortunately, fender's got to go, but I don't know why I'm talking about all this, because we already talked about most of this, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing again. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get the distributor rebuilt on here and fire it up. Once it gets fired up and I hear it, everything's good. Um, check the clutch, see if it works. Unfortunately, with the radiator not hooked up, I'm not going to do a lot of driving to check the TA. I mean, I figured if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it done. I'm really not sweating this one. Um, I really don't need the TA. So fingers across that it works. And then um, pull this thing outside, pressure wash it, get it all cleaned off, get all this loose stuff off of here, get it cleaned up really good, and then um, start putting it back together. So, all right, let's get set up and let's get these pistons back in. Well, actually, before I do, I can walk over and show. So everything is cleaned up. Pistons and all came out really good. I got the rings and everything on. The, uh, <laughs> the head, obviously, you saw the video on that, so that came out good. So that number three cylinder that was froze up, so this is how the rings came out of all the cylinders, except for three. This is how they came off the pistons, trying to get the rings off. They were, uh, they were rusting, they were pretty good. So a lot of people, when they do these will it runs, and they do these videos of, oh, I just dumped some acetone, dump this, dump in there, and then sometimes those rings will let go. Not all the time, because you can see how packed that oil ring is. So, um, a lot of times that won't. And if that does let go, you know where that's going to let go at? 
all through your oil system. <laughs> it's going to go up and down them cylinder walls. And that right there is a killer to your cylinders, to everything in your motor, bearings and all. Um, so yeah, it may seem good on a lot of those will it runs, just hear the thing fire up, but you pretty much destroyed the motor, so. Anyway, I mean, they're entertainment, you know. I mean, I'm guilty too. I watch some of them, and, you know, if you're going to do a will it run just to fire her off just to hear it run, just to see if it does, I mean, cool. But as long as you're planning on rebuilding it afterwards, because, like I said, you're not going to get no longevity out of, out of that motor whatsoever. Anyway, so, yeah, we're all good to go. I checked the ring gap and everything, and I think we're about 21 thousandths on the ring gap. And I think the allowance was 19 to 23. So I'm actually good on the ring gap. So I'm happy with that. So those sleeves, again, will last for this last rebuild. Stay. Um, I sprayed the head gasket with the copper spray. That's the old head gasket. But I did spray it with the copper spray. So usually I spray my head gaskets down with the copper spray gasket adhesive. And other than that, that's about it. Um, let's get this thing together. The rocker assembly is actually pretty good. I'm going to clean all that up, though. And uh, we're going to assemble this thing. So let me get set up. Okay, so the first two things we're going to start with. Numero uno. The most important thing. Crack a cold one after the day. Okay. Number two. Wipe the cylinders out. Make sure all the gook's out of them. And then we're going to go underneath, clean out the crank journals go through all the holes for the oil passages. We're gonna clean all those out, make sure everything's good. Make sure nothing's sitting on top of the crank where the mains are. And then um, once we do that, we're gonna start positioning these uh, these pistons in there. I am gonna use a different style compressor this time. I did an order off of Amazon, one of these style ring compressors. So curious to see how well it actually works. I mean, it seems like it's pretty easy so far. Definitely a lot easier than the other type. Just kind of release it. And they just pops off, so I don't know. Guess we're gonna find out, huh? So usually when I position my pistons, obviously you got to make sure that you have this part where you got your number stamped in. It's got to go to the cam side, and then with your pistons going up and down this way, usually what I like to do is I position my rings to the sides like that for my ring gap rather than doing them front to back reason being is because with that piston going up and down this way i'd rather not have the rings gouged to the front or the back of the cylinder so i like to try to keep my ring gaps to the sides um so that's how i'm going to position these before i lock these down and then of course keep them opposite of your oil ring gaps now again when i put the first band on i positioned that you know around about 180 from the bottom ring and then where this two where that actually snaps together in the middle of the oil ring it's somewhere in between those um, so again keep all your, your rings spaced out so when we put this in it's going to go this direction so I'll turn top ring and see if I can do this without spinning every single one of them around take that one about 180 from there and then spin the third ring there. It's just, they are moving so easy. Okay, so roughly somewhere in there is where I'm going to space my ring gap. So top ring will be right about there to the front, to the side. Second ring will be to this side. And then the third ring, which moved on me again, will be back here. So that way all three rings aren't in line. That's the biggest thing. Again, everybody has their own method on how they do it. I just don't like my ring gaps front and back of the cylinder. Um, like I said, just for the way the piston goes up and down, even though I know it rides straight, I don't want it gouging into my walls. So that's how I'm doing it. Other than that, let's go ahead and get this thing cleaned up. All right, we're all cleaned up. I thought I pressed record, but I didn't. But you didn't miss anything. All I was doing is wiping the journals off, so no biggie. But anyway, I'll shine a camera up there and show. Like I said, all the journals came out really nice, surprisingly, for that one not being uh, locked down. Luckily, whatever happened, the motor, you know, whatever, whatever the reason they <laughs> left the tractor sit, luckily, you know, 
kept from doing any damage. So, um, but yeah, we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing prepped and we're going to start sliding these pistons on in here. You know, there's something else that I forgot I wanted to mention. Um, since I didn't show the process, when you get your rings, um, obviously your bag will be set up first ring, second ring, third ring, and your fourth ring, which is your oil ring. Now on these pistons here, these are directional. You got to make sure that the upside first ring is up, second ring upside is up, third ring upside is up. Oil ring doesn't matter. Either side is fine. Um, as far as the little top ring, the center oil ring, and the lower ring, it snaps it in place. That doesn't matter, but you do want to make sure that your other three rings are in place. And your chrome ring will actually go to the top. And then your two black rings will be your second and your third. Um, what you can see here, there's the gap right there in my ring. That's where the two join in. That's where I have the first ring set right there. And then the other ring is where the gap is on this side. So that's how you can go ahead and set your oil ring up. And once you do that, you're good to go. So anyway, just wanted to mention that because I didn't show the putting the, the rings on here. So just wanted to make a quick note. All right, we're going to get these bearings unpackaged. And we're going to start with number one and number four since those journals are down low. Um, and then we'll spin this thing around once we get it all set in place. And then we'll do two and three. I do use, which most people do, um, assembly lube. A lot of people use oil. I like to use assembly lube because, honestly, I'm probably going to change the oil anyway like I usually do after, you know, the first time taking this thing out and running it and using it. So I don't care if this mixes in. I'm going to flush it anyway just because if there is any other contaminants in the engine that you didn't get out, at least your oil change um, after you run it will get it out. So that's why I'm using this. Um, and then, yeah, I already mentioned the copper spray on the head gasket. And then as far as the studs, I'm going to put some anti-seize on here. So that way in the future, it'll make it easier for getting this engine off, the head off. And I think that's honestly about it. Other than that, we're ready to go ahead and start driving these pistons home. So, all right, now I'll set back up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, my locking tabs. They actually worked out really well so far. I put them on each one and put them in place and... Everything fit inside the groove perfectly. So I think we're going to be safe. And I'm actually going to bend those over like they're supposed to be bent. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Put it back in. All right. So we're now ready to go ahead and get the pistons in this thing. Um, so what I like to do is take a little bit of assembly lube. And I'll put it on the bearing like that. Which I already did. So I'm not putting a lot on. Go ahead and rub that in. Get that on your bearing. All right. Then you want to make sure your rings are gapped properly. And then you want to make sure that when you drop this thing in, the numbers that are over here stamped in the side. So one side doesn't have it, the other side does. Make sure this goes towards the camshaft. So we're putting it in the motor this way. And now what I want to do is, before I start dropping it down and getting it ready, let's get the spring compressor opened up. compressor piston ring compressor now let me see if I can do this while I'm trying to hold it for the video it's not the easiest thing to do and you want to make sure that when you put this on don't mess up your gap which seems like this one actually works a little nicer to go on without screwing your gap up okay one try to bring it just about to the bottom of the piston right here that way you make sure your oil ring and everything's captured because if not if you end up leaving that little bottom oil ring sticking out you're going to bend it up pushing it in all right so once you go ahead and get that position where you want it take your nice oily pliers <laughs> that come with your compressor and go ahead and just give it a squeeze the cam locks will lock and hold and that's it. Now you see, all your rings are now compressed. I already put oil on the piston, so I got a little bit on the skirt. I have oil on the cylinders, and I put oil on all the rings. So that way all the rings have oil on them already. Position this in there real easy. Now, if this engine... Hang on. All right. 
So if the rods on this motor here had the studs coming down on the bottom of it, I would actually put two pieces of rubber fuel line over top of those so when they go down, they can't go down and hit the crank journal and then scar it going down. This one doesn't have that. So obviously this one just has bolts to go in. I know you like my finger impressions there. Um, just had the bolts to go in so you can slide this down. But when you drive that piston in, break the surface, get it about an inch below the surface, go underneath and check, find out how much further you need to bring it down and drive it down. It's a lot easier when you have somebody tapping it down for you as you're underneath guiding it, but you can do this by yourself. It's a little harder and it's really hard trying to film it <laughs> the way I have to do this. So I may pause and start some of the process, but you're gonna see the majority of it. So now you see this is in, this is compressed, all right? I'm gonna double check one more time to make sure my rod is going close to the angle that I want, which is right there. So that should get me pretty close on that crank journal. You can use rubber hammer or you can use the wood, doesn't matter, whatever is easier for you. And easily tap it in. Just like that. Now what I do like about this compressor compared to the other band style is you can actually see through here which is nice because you can see those rings compressed and you can see it as you're going down to make sure nothing is popped out and binding. Just give it a slight tap and drive it on in. If you start hitting it and you actually have to beat it, stop. That means maybe one of your rings are binding up. You don't want to go any further than that. So why don't you go ahead and get it in. Take it down about an inch, go underneath, check it. Finish taking it home and put it in place. So I'm gonna hit pause. I'm gonna go underneath, take a look, and then I'll set the camera up and show you. Okay. So like I said, since I'm kind of a one-man show out here doing this today, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna get this thing lined up on this journal real easy. So what I'm gonna do is I got the piston almost all the way down. I have it angled where I want it. Bearings in place, so we're good. So I'm going to very slowly and have my fingers protecting that journal. I'd rather it give me a little pinch than score my journal. And drop my flashlight. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's a little difficult. All right, so I'm pretty close, but I have to turn it just a little bit. Right there, and it turns pretty easy. All right touching the journal and I'm just gonna pull it on nice and slow because you don't want to come down and scar it and that's it she's in and it's on and it's snug so now I'm good now I'm gonna go ahead and get the cap I'm gonna put that assembly lube on the cap and we're gonna screw that in all right here's the bearing Here's the cap and here's the lube. And again, make sure you got the orientation correct. Make sure all the caps go to the corresponding rods. You don't want to get that mixed up. All right, so what I'm doing is, since you can't see this, I'm just sitting the bearing in place. Like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and put assembly lube on it. I'll show you once I get this on here. You don't have to go super crazy with it, but don't be cheap on it either. Remember, this thing's starting up dry, so you do not <laughs> want to have the motor starting dry. All right. Now, as you see, it's a nice liberal amount on there. All right, so you're going to, again, check your cap. Let me get this one over here. There's the number right there. There's the cam over here. Turn the cap very easily. Get this up, get this in place. And of course, somebody's got to call me on the other phone. Let me lift this up, get my wrench out of here. All right. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to snug this up, but I'm not going to tighten this up. I just want to run these up close to where they're supposed to be until I'm ready. So me trying to hurry up and find out who's calling me. I gotta spin that lock around. Let's just say this is not the easiest to do upside down in filming. <laughs> Apparently I'm bumping the camera all over the place with that creeper. Let me make sure I got the camera still in position here. Yeah, it's close enough. sure I'm doing is keeping these locking tabs straight in position like they're supposed to be because they're meant to go that way and I want to keep them that way all right and they're up and they're pretty good so I'm just gonna touch this a hair with this wrench but don't tighten them up all the way Basically, I'm just trying to get the caps in the rod to lock together. That's it. They are. Let me double check. Lock together there. And it looks like it is locked together there. All right, that's good. So that's as far as I want to go right now. But obviously, we're going to come back and we're going to torque all these down. I got to check the specs in the book and find out what it was. Um, I remembered, but then it's been a while since I got a chance to get out of here, so I can't remember what it was again. All right, so we're good. Tab is good. All right, let's go ahead and get the uh, number four in there. All right, my friends, all the pistons are in, and we're good to go. So now I got to go ahead and torque this thing down. Um, still haven't looked in the book yet for the torque specs, so I'm going to do that right now. But I also wanted to bring you around, and in case anybody was wondering what spring compressor, um, well, piston ring compressor, that I ended up picking up. So here's the kit right here. Um, it comes with ring compressors down to, it's not small enough for the cub, unfortunately. In order to use this one here for the cub, I was going to cut this off and then re-weld it back when I make a smaller band. I think the smallest is like two and seven eighths to three and an eighth. Um, you can modify it for the cub, but it's not small enough for that. But anyway, here is the information on this kit. So that's the one I end up getting. So it seemed like you know for these for the bigger pistons, I mean that actually worked pretty good. I I liked it. I don't really have any complaints out of this. So um i don't remember how much i paid for it apologize it's been a while that i bought it so i can't tell you that but i am going to look in the book i am going to get the torque specs we're going to torque all these rods down set the head gasket on there and then we're going to go ahead and put the head on get all that torque down and get the inside of this engine wrapped up so i can get on other stuff to get this thing to run so let me set back up in the can in the stand all right so i finally grabbed the book <laughs> so Looks like we're going to be going about 50 foot-pounds. Um, once we get everything in and installed, I'm going to check the side clearance. And between 5,000 and 12,000 is good. Now, this is actually really funny right here because when I did show uh, that short video about being a ticking time bomb, somebody actually commented and said, you know, well, if everything's torqued properly, you shouldn't need those uh, lock you know, covers or the cap screws or whatever. But even in the book, number 11, bend connecting rod bolt locks over the cap screws. That's what I said is they are supposed to be installed on this engine. They're supposed to be bent over and locked down. But it's just funny how sometimes people will um, kind of not really argue, but kind of throw the two cents in of stuff like that's not needed. Well, they actually were needed, and they're specified in the book, which is why I made some and put them back on. <laughs> so anyway, well, let's get back to it. So anyway, so we're going to go ahead and put these down to 50 foot-pounds, and then, like I said, we're going to check side-to-side -side thrust, which this is where they're showing. Right here. I usually do it anyway. 
Um, but each engine, you want to make sure that you get the proper um, side to side to make sure you got the right clearance. So anyway, so we're going to go ahead and uh, start torquing this down and uh, get this thing done. All right, hopefully you guys can see that okay. Probably not going to film doing every single one of these. We'll just film the first one to kind of show. All right, so I got my feeler gauge. I checked it with the 12. It was a little snug. Checking it with the 11. And the 11 actually goes in with just a touch of resistance on both sides. And that's between the rod, like they said. So, with intolerance. So that's good. Now, when I use my torque wrench, I have it set to 50. I use a extension that is actually made for uh, torquing stuff down so that way it doesn't have any flex to it because if you use like a cheap extension it could end up um, stretching and you won't get a true reading so I'm just going to get on each one a little bit to make sure we're going even and that's good that is our 50. So like I said, don't take much. Now I'm going to go just a touch to make sure I am perfect. And that's it. So after that point, what I'm thinking I might just go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get all these torqued down, come back, and I'm going to bend all these locks over afterwards. I'm not really in the mood to <laughs> bend each one as I go. You know, just in case, you know, if you run into like a hiccup or something, and you're like, damn, you got to take something back apart. Well, I don't think I will, but I think I'm just going to do it at the end. So what I'm doing is just torquing, just run these a little bit until each one feels like it's got about the same amount of pressure. And then once it feels like it's about right, do the final click. And like I said, I'm just going to go a hair more. There and there. And I'll check that side to side just for that little bit. And the 11 goes in there actually. And the 11 actually goes in there. So as far as the thrust side to side, that's about the same. Yep, so we're good. So what I'm going to do is also, I am going to recheck the mains as well. And just make sure that the mains were torqued properly. Just because of what I already found. But other than that, this thing is going to sound good when it's all done. So, alright, let me spin this motor over and get the rest of these torqued down. And then I may call it a night. But I'll be back tomorrow. And we're going to go ahead and get this head on there. I did pull the, uh, the shaft of that M&W off uh, for the governor. So I have that sitting on the table, so that way I'll do a little video on a quick repair on that. And um, yeah, let's get the rest of these things torqued down, and then uh, let's get this head on there. All right, my friends, I am back. All right, so unfortunately it's two days later. Um, I've been busy with work, so I haven't had a chance to get back out here. And when I did, I wasn't really thinking, and I sat the head on there. You guys didn't miss, miss much. I really didn't do anything special. Um, what I told you was I just went ahead and... Um, uh, sprayed the head gasket with the copper spray both sides look for the um, area on the head gasket that says this end up um, actually this one said this end down I believe it was the same style steel as this one but anyway yeah I think it was this end down so anyway so you put the proper side down um, I set the head you know down on top it went on there easy as can be um, like I said I put some anti seize on all the studs so that way this thing will come off easy again next time I went ahead and cleaned up all the uh, bolts, the head bolts, and then I ran a tap through there um, just to make sure that everything was good. And they actually all turned on by hand, so it actually went in really nice. Um, and then that's really all I did to the motor that I didn't film except for just cleaned up the push rods, just wiped down the uh, rocker assembly and everything on here. Um, and really that was about it. Um, let me see. I did get a part in today, and I do want to thank my subscriber um i don't want to mention his name only because of the fact of i don't know if he wants his name mentioned but if you're watching my video you know who you are 
Um, he actually turned me on to a company on eBay that you guys may have heard of this. I've never heard of this company. Um, let me see if I can find the name. It's K&M Manufacturing, and they're on eBay, and they sell second best seats. And I picked up a seat. Here's the number. This is a seat with the brass ring. Um, it's a four-hole seat. Got the Made in USA sticker on it, and everything's good. Um, I got the red and white one for the 450s, and then I got the silver one for the 300. But I tell you, um, these seats are about 300 bucks to get a hold of these seats. This company is selling them for $44 and free shipping. Um, like I said, some of you guys may have heard of this company. I've never heard of the company. And I'll tell you one thing, I'm getting ready to go on tonight and order the other one for the diesel. So the reason they sell them so cheap is because there's some areas that when they did the spray foam, uh, while well, they put the foam on, they put the spray adhesive. Some areas may have not stuck to the foam, like that right there. I'm not really worried about that because you know what? My butt's gonna be here. I'm not gonna see that. And you know what? When you buy these seats for 300 bucks anyway, and your butt starts moving around, guess what? Some of that breaks loose anyway. It really doesn't matter. Um, for 44 hours and free shipping? Um, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I am, actually I'm gonna send Gino over at uh, Farmall Fanatic. I'm sure any of you guys have heard of him. He's a good guy. Um, anyway, I'm going to send him a message to see if he's ever heard of them because he might be able to grab himself one for his 400 that he's uh, working on. So anyway, so I want to tell you guys that eBay, K&M, what did I say it was? K&M Manufacturing. $44.95, I believe it was. Free shipping. Can't beat it. All right, so tonight, and the last thing I'm going to do tonight, um, well, the last thing on this video is we're going to go ahead and torque down all the head bolts, sit the uh, valve train assembly on there and the push rods, and snug those down. Um, all the valves are going to get adjusted to 17 thousandths, um, so we're going to get that done. The head bolts have to be 115 foot-pounds, and I'm going to start at 60 with all of them, and then we're going to go to the 115 final. Um, I was thinking about possibly going 120, because honestly, I don't really feel like going back and torquing these things down after they're hot, even though you're supposed to, I know. <laughs> I may. I mean, the tractor's coming back in anyway. Once it gets running, it's going outside so I can pressure wash it, and then I'm going to back it on back in here, and then we're going to fully take it apart. Um, so anyway, so that's the plan. So I'm going to set this thing up. We're going to go ahead and do the sequence on here, get this thing all torqued down, and then... Um, that's going to be a wrap for this video and then the next well the reason i had to make it a wrap is because um i got duped on ebay <laughs> i ordered a complete gasket kit so they said i didn't check the packaging and i pulled out of course the head gasket and then i started thinking about it and i'm like i didn't see a pan gasket inside there anywhere i checked the packaging a little closer and yeah it was just basically an upper assembly gasket set actually I think it was the head gasket, valve cover gasket, exhaust gaskets, carburetor gasket, and a couple eyes and ends. But that's it. I didn't get no water jacket cover, tap it cover, no oil pan, no governor. I, I got nothing. So I guess I should have checked a little closer. So that was my fault. So I ordered another gasket set, um, complete one. So I'll have a backup head gasket to put on the shelf. So anyway, so once that gets here, then I can seal up the oil pan and everything. So what I'm going to do is, while I'm waiting for that, and once I get this done, the next video coming out is going to be probably a combination of rebuilding the distributor and the carburetor together. It's going to be kind of a faster high-speed video, um, only because of the fact that I've done the carburetors in the past, I've done the distributors in the past, so I really don't think there's a need for me to have to show it, because there are plenty of videos out there. Um, you guys are welcome to comment on this video to tell me, nope, I want to see the whole thing. Just let me know. If not, like I said, I'll probably just make it a little faster video. Um, get this thing done, get it over with. Uh, yeah, then we're going to fire it up. So let's get set up and let's get this head done. All right. Now I got to walk back around the tractor <laughs> after I kick the phone over. All right, we're good. Go around here and let's get it. Torque these pups down. All right, so in the book, it shows. Here's the first one. Number one.
to. So I did contact a company, I think they're called BK Diesel, I believe they're called. Um, for the, the hell number was on? Three. Um, for the diesel tractor because the guy told me when I got it that some diesel is working its way into the oil. So from what I found out, um, obviously the injector pump has a bad seal on the front of it. Um, so I'll have to get a seal kit for it because I heard that the, um, let me, let me stop this for a second. I heard that the, uh, the pumps themselves for like a rebuilt pump is close to like 900 bucks. And I think that was a few years back. So I'm not sure what the price is um, now. Um, but I also heard that the gasket set is around 350 I think it is for the gasket set. I, I'm just going to go the route on the gasket set. Um, because everything on the tractor runs fine. Except for on the gas side. I got a... I got new plugs for it. Well, yeah, the big D something plugs. Anyway, the ones that actually are meant for that engine. Um, I got the actual plugs. I got the uh, some new wires. I got the uh, points condenser. Um, I got a carburetor rebuild kit coming because it's the F8 starting carburetor on that tractor. Because um, I'm going to basically refurbish the whole gas side. Um, and then make it start up a little easier on the gas. Because once it's on diesel, the thing runs beautiful. But I don't want oil or diesel going into my oil and starting to fill that up and then diluting my oil because I don't want an issue with the engine. Um, obviously, when I bring that thing in here for the full oil restoration, that puppy's getting broken all the way down to the housing <laughs> for the transmission. I mean, we're breaking her all the way down in the future, but that's going to be when I get the other garage built. Um, but I want to get it up and running and, and basically working flawless. Um, so anyway, so yeah, I didn't know. If anybody's got any information out there on any good companies that actually sell the gasket sets or you know won't kill me um, as far as doing a, a rebuild if that's actually feasible on that pump I would be open to uh, calling somebody but from what I've seen so far and heard through forums it's kind of ridiculous actually on the cost so just want to throw that out there if anybody's got any information on that if you have a diesel Then we're going number 11. Number 12 is this one. Number 13. Number 14. Fifteen and sixteen. And that is the last one. Now we're gonna crank this puppy up to what did I say it was one hundred and fifteen. Thing so tight right there. 115 right there. Right there. Okay. Um, now when I do my head bolts and stuff like that, I don't like to use an extension on here. Now what I was was I was saying about the rod bolts, if you use a socket extension on a torque wrench, and if that socket extension isn't made for torque wrenches, believe it or not you won't get a true reading out of your torque wrench. So if you do use an extension, make sure it's an extension made for torquing or impact, um, something that's made to not give a slight twist, because you'd want to make sure that 
you keep this as accurate as possible. So when it comes to the heads, I usually don't use any kind of extension on there, even though it would be a lot nicer over top of these. Um, but I'd rather not, because I want to make sure I get the true reading on here. I didn't explain it um, earlier when I did the rods, but I just wanted to say it now. So. I can remember the pattern, but it's kind of hard to remember the pattern of this sometimes. I swear to God, I gotta be looking right at it. Yeah, I am. Five. Good Lord. Apparently, I haven't had my beer. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna check them from here. I'm not gonna go in the pattern again because they should be tight. I just want to make sure none are missed. everything.
All right, she is back together and looking good. Okay, well let's get that. Uh, let's get these. I'm gonna drip some oil down on top of those lifters, and then we're gonna drop the push rods back in. Should have cleaned that little dab of antifreeze out of the top of some of them, but I didn't. No. And like I said, I'm planning on changing the wheel anyway. I don't think I have anything to get down inside there to push that out. It's just a little itty bitty bit of antifreeze on top of those lifters. I did not think of pushing that out of there. Give me a second. Let me see if I can grab something to line myself. Let me see if I can grab something to dab that out of there real quick. All right, all good. Crisis averted. It was just a teeny tiny bit. I was able to drop a little bit of oil down in there and give it a push and popped a little bit right out so <laughs> all good all right just gotta get these puppies all dropped out again it's kind of nice not having a seized up engine anymore and sir that was the only thing stopping me from making this damn thing run but i tell you after what i saw in there I am thankful I took it apart. This poor girl could have had a thrown rod in her engine if I didn't pull it apart. It actually didn't matter if I would have tried to start it anyway with the condition of those, uh, that number three cylinder. Those rings would have ate those walls right up anyway, so it would have destroyed the motor not long after it was running, so. It's up where it goes. Now I didn't back these off yet, so what I'm gonna do is draw them down semi-even-ish. Once I get them kind of in place, and then I'll adjust them from there. I always forget about that tube on this thing going in there. Pause for a minute. The kid was calling. <laughs> all right, get all those on there like that. All right. Let's start snugging this puppy down a little bit. Just 
just enough to hold the pressure out in place. Now I'm going to have to take a look in the book and see what the what they require for the torque for these. Sometimes I just put these on and just snug them to a comfortable tight. A little bit of adjusting here and there. As expected, considering they do a valve job. Alright. I will check what the bolt specs are on this real quick. And um I don't know if I want to bore you guys on adjusting the valves. I mean obviously, you know, these two are up. I can adjust these, crank the motor around until these are up, adjust these two. And then usually I go around for good measure and I watch each one till they come to the highest point and then I check each one individual after. So, um, so I'm probably not going to go ahead and bore you guys with adjusting the valves. That's again nothing special. If it comes down to in the future you guys want to see valve adjustment, um, there's some out there, you know, videos. But if you want to see how I do it, that's fine. Just ask me and I will make sure I do a special video one just adjusting the valves that's not a problem at all but I think this video is long enough so I'm not going to add that into this all right I come around and get the camera all right so again everything's down that's how it looks and like I said I'm just going to go around now adjust the valves I already figured out where top dead center is. I already got the crank marked for when I pull the distributor out. I mean, this thing's coming out. I mean, it's coming along so easy. It's kind of scary, actually. Um, but like I said, it's it's not hard if you guys just take your time and do this. It doesn't really take much. Um, just go slow and do what I'm doing. Like I said, it's not a relay race. So anyway, and make sure you guys get yourself a book. That is super valuable. But um. I'm trying to think if I'm doing anything else really I'm gonna well I'm gonna do a lot of videos on here um, I'm gonna check the TA because I need to have about I think it's an eighth to a sixteenth play here then an eighth to a sixteenth play here which this one I think is actually pretty damn close um, so I'm gonna check the adjustment on this before we take it for its first ride and then I gotta check the clutch make sure that's good and I am missing a spring on that clutch so I'm gonna have to get a spring for it um, but that's it anyway so we're done so make sure you guys hit that notification bell and like subscribe share me out it's always appreciated it helps so much um and again i just want to say thank you to all you guys everybody who's my faithful watchers and subscribers it means a lot um supporting the channel obviously you know the more you guys watch my video and you don't fast forward it and you actually watch it it helps with the youtube algorithm so if you guys watch my video in its entirety, it's more than appreciated. It helps more than you know. Um, but again, if you guys can tell people about my videos and um, if you guys have any suggestions on anything you want to see, let me know. Um, I got both the fast hitches off and I do have the three point um, uh, connectors. Actually, the guy gave me with this 450. I broke the eye sockets loose and everything works perfectly now. They're in the sandblast cabinet. So these are going to get powder coated white and those are going to get powder coated white. So that way they're the colors are supposed to be. And that'll be another video. So anyway, thank you guys again. Appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification bell. And until next time, thanks for watching.